the difference between being online and offline is getting much blurrier. It used to be like, oh, the internet is the space and there's the physical world and now they're together. It requires constant effort to keep asking like, what am I doing here and why? I'm an artist and I'm an assistant professor here at UCLA in the design media arts program. The first time that I was really putting the art and the computer science together, it was more looking at things that I do really poorly compared to other people in the social situations and wondering if I could make kind of DIY devices to fix it. Ideas for projects usually start with whatever is confusing me the most at the moment. And I'm really looking for an idea that like scares me a little bit and also makes me laugh. Social Turkers was a project that came out of this question of whether I could crowdsource my social interactions. For a month, I went on a bunch of blind dates. I would pay people through this site called Amazon Mechanical Turk. I streamed the video and I said, okay, go to this link, watch the video in real time, and then type into this form what I should say or do. The directions would come directly to me on the date and I would have to perform or do the thing that they told me to do sort of immediately. So when I was getting these directions and I had to just do these things, and I did, I realized like, oh, actually, like the sky didn't fall. We hold ourselves in these little boxes sometimes that we think are our identities, and they could actually be uh, much broader. And it's interesting. So I met my partner through this project, but he wasn't actually one of the dates. He was actually one of the people that happened to tune in. So the date, unsurprisingly, didn't go that well. But then I got home, and there was an email from him. I saw your project. We should talk. <laughs> As an advisor and as a crit moderator, something we really appreciate about Lauren is that she really connects with us as students from where we're coming from, from our past work, and then from there is able to give more personable advice on how to move forward. Lauren is an attempt to become like a human version of Amazon Alexa. You can sign up to get Lauren in your home. I install a bunch of devices, cameras, microphones, door locks. I leave and I remotely watch over you 24 hours a day and I control things just like Alexa would. I'm trying to figure out what is it that they need and it almost becomes sort of like a game, like sure I can turn on the lights or, or run the faucet, but what is the thing that I could do that would bring a smile to their face or, or actually surprise them or just make them feel something. I'm a human, so I can see you as a person and then make guesses about what you might want or need and sort of anticipate your desires and then take action without you necessarily even having to ask. Lauren has recommended that I get a haircut every three weeks, and let me tell you, it's helped with my, uh, my self-esteem a lot. Part of the project is based around this question of how does it feel to know that there's a human on the other end? Lauren thinks that playing music or shutting down all my electronics is the best way for me to cope and winding down. Has data destroyed privacy? I think it's definitely eroded privacy. All the systems around us have basically asked us to give our consent to give up our data. And by doing so, we're giving up our privacy. But I think there's a lot of places where you actually find your family or your home or a community. So I don't see it as this binary as of bad or good. You are going out into the world and you will be the ones deciding how you want it to be. And that's sort of a theme that carries through to my work. It's about this idea that we don't have to take everything that's given to us. We can decide how we want to exist in the world and what we want to engage with or what we want to change. Hyundai Motor, connecting art and technology.